and thank you to everyone who uh, is continuing to stream us here on NBCLA.com and all of our streaming platforms. I'm Eliana Moreno alongside my pilot, James Pollard. Let me give you the map there so you can uh, track where this new pursuit is at. We're northbound on the Fire Freeway at Slauson Avenue in the Montebello area, but we're about to enter Commerce here momentarily. We'll pass by landmarks like uh, the Commerce Casino as well as the Citadel. Now, this is the uh, California Highway Patrol that is in pursuit. And I just heard the police code come across the scanner. Originally, um, this vehicle uh, was what's called, uh, the code is 1126. So that does come back to uh, an abandoned vehicle, perhaps a, a car that you would see off to the right side of the highway. Uh, the CHP stopped to take a look to see uh, what was going on. And that is when the female driver took off. At this point, uh, it sounds like they believe that she's the only person in the car. And it's unclear, though, why she took off. Uh, this pursuit started uh, in Orange County. I believe it's the chase that I originally had heard down uh, in uh, the San Juan Capistrano area on the northbound 5 freeway at Avery Parkway. So this has been northbound on the 5 here for quite some time. We're all the way, uh, once again, we're all the way up in commerce now. Uh, the vehicle itself is a red, uh, looks like a Toyota RAV4. It's got the spare wheel there on the back. Uh, California Highway Patrol in pursuit of this one uh, directly behind the vehicle with three squad cars. You've also got an airship overhead, uh, but it's actually a plane. So it's a CHP plane that's overhead because the helicopter is actually tied up over in Glendale. Uh, you might have seen our coverage uh, during uh, the... Uh, 5 o'clock and 6 o'clock uh, news on NBCLA about uh, the uh, protest that is taking place outside of the Glendale Unified School District. Well, the CHP airship was over there uh, doing orbits, assisting with that uh, uh, scene, and so uh, they actually sent the plane uh, to come cover this pursuit. So there's a plane up above our heads at about 2,300 feet. We're, of course, a little bit lower than that, and this pursuit continues here northbound on the 5 freeway coming up to Atlantic, which is going to be uh, near the uh, 710. And real quickly, I'm just going to say a few words for our sister station, Telemundo, in Spanish. And as soon as I'm done, we'll resume our coverage in English. Buenas tardes desde el helicóptero. Yo soy Elena Moreno, reportando sobre una persecución policíaca que ahora se encuentra en el área de Commerce, en la autopista 5, en dirección norte, acercándose a la autopista 710. Esta es la patrulla de caminos de California que está persiguiendo a este vehículo Toyota RAV4 a rojo en color. Uh, la conductora es la única persona que está detrás del uh, volante y la única persona que está dentro del vehículo, más bien dicho. Esta es una persecución que empezó en el condado de Orange. Uh, yo estaba escuchando el radio de la policía y escuché que había una persecución que empezó en el área de uh, la autopista 5 y Avery Parkway. Uh, posiblemente es la misma persecución uh, con la Patrulla de Caminos de, de California, pero uh, continuó en la autopista 5 en dirección norte, donde ahora nos encontramos en el área de Commerce. Inicialmente, la Patrulla de Caminos de, de California se acercó a este vehículo porque pensaban que era un vehículo abandonado, pero al acercarse fue cuando la conductora empezó a manejar y la persecución empezó. Entonces, ya lleva... Um, por lo menos media hora que esta persecución empezó y ahora se encuentra en el condado de Los Ángeles, continuando en la autopista 5 en dirección norte, uh, entrando al este de Los Ángeles. Como pueden ver, hay tres patrullas uh, detrás del vehículo, junto con un avión de la patrulla de caminos de California. Reportando desde el este de Los Ángeles sobre la persecución que se encuentra en la autopista 5 en dirección norte, yo soy Eliana Moreno, del Mundo 52. And back with you guys here in English. I was just saying a few words for our sister station, uh, Telemundo, but uh, uh, essentially what I was saying was that initially the CHP tried to pull this, or they didn't even try to pull the vehicle over. They approached the vehicle because they thought it was an abandoned car. Uh, but once they got closer, that's when the uh, woman in the vehicle simply took off. So at this point, it's unclear to them why she had pulled over to begin with and then why she took off and just won't pull over. Um, again, this is uh, the CHP, so if you've got a CHP scanner handy, I know some uh, folks like to listen along with us. Uh, that is who is in pursuit. Uh, we've got three squad cars behind the 
the vehicle. We've also got a CHP plane overhead approaching Indiana Street here on the northbound five. Calzone is going to be the next exit, uh, and the East LA interchange is going to be coming up here very soon. East LA interchange is actually in Boyle Heights, despite the name, but it's actually the busiest interchange in the world, although it won't really seem like that right now when uh, she approaches the interchange because uh, traffic is very light. You can see really uh, not too much uh, in the way of traffic here. Uh, at almost 8 o'clock here on a Tuesday in the L.A. area. So uh, she really won't have too many obstacles up ahead, but she will have some options. When she gets to the East L.A. interchange, that's when she'll have some options in terms of what freeway she would like to pick up next. She's got the 10, the 101, and of course she's able to continue on the 5 as well. Uh, the vehicle itself, as far as I know, does not come back as a stolen. Uh, so if that's the case, they can run the plates and, and figure out who it's registered to. But I believe these may actually be Arizona plates. Had a, haven't had a chance to look at them before, but there you go. Arizona plates on this Toyota RAV4. Uh, the CHP can still run those, though. Uh, they can still get uh, some information on who the owner may be. But uh, that uh, will likely mean that that registration is not going to come back to a home here in California, uh, which oftentimes is uh, what they'll do is they'll run the plates, they'll get the registration information, and they can send some officers to wait the, for the person at their home. Uh, but in this case, uh, those plates come back to Arizona. So at this point, it's unclear where this vehicle may go. There's the CHP close behind. So we're heading, uh, it looks like she's making the transition to the northbound five, I want to say. Yeah, it looks like northbound five to me, but I'll know here in a moment. Yeah, it looks like northbound five. All the freeways come together here, the uh, five, the 101, the 10. Uh, so until she completes the transition, it's not really clear. But here's the Hollenbeck Park. So that to me is a sign that it is the five freeway. So let's see what she does. She's approaching fourth. Uh, this portion of the five is kind of confusing because it is the, both the five and it's also the 10. So some of the landmarks that we're passing by uh, in a moment are going to be, of course, that we just passed by Hollenbeck Park. Uh, we've got County USC Medical Hospital coming up as well. Speeds on this are incredibly fast. You can see uh, we're just looking at about 50 miles an hour or so. Uh, approaching uh, Cesar Chavez here. The tint on this car is pretty heavy. Uh, looks like limo tint pretty much all the way around. I can kind of see uh, a shadow there in the front seat, but I really can't make out too much. Ah, uh, sure. Wouldn't mind. So what we're going to try to do is, uh, Jim's going to try to get ahead of it, and maybe we can uh, peek in that front window because uh, there's no tent on the front. So maybe we can at least uh, try to look at this person, see uh, what their demeanor may be. As, uh, from what we've been able to gather across the scanner, they don't believe anyone else is in the car with her. But again, it's unclear why she uh, took off when uh, CHP officers approached. So I'm going to throw in some doublers here. So you're going to see a few uh, filter changes, changes here. It'll help. Uh. So she's going about 60 miles an hour in light traffic. Approaching Maine. So she's got something there in the front seat of the, the passenger uh, side. Uh, it looks like a bag or something. Got a, some things there in the middle too, and I can barely make her out.
seems to be driving you know, pretty normally. I'm not really seeing uh, uh, any erratic behavior. Uh, it looks like both hands are on the steering wheel. Uh, pretty calm. There's no doubt that she knows she's being pursued. Oftentimes, there, you can run across situations where it's perhaps an elderly person and they simply just don't realize that they're being pursued. Uh, but in this case, uh, that's not that's not the case. Uh, she's been in this now for uh, quite some time, at least 30 minutes, maybe more. Uh, we picked up the chase when it was at the 5605, but this may actually be the same chase that I was hearing uh, down in Orange County. Uh, and that had been going on uh, for a good another 15 minutes or so. Oh, thank you, Jim. Uh, so Jim can see up ahead. He says that there's a CHP officer that's racing up ahead. Uh, so sometimes they'll do that when they want to set up some spike strips, perhaps, or they're just trying to slow down traffic. Uh, so we'll see what happens. In this case, uh, they're not going to try anything like a pitch. She's going just too fast. She's going about 50 miles an hour. But uh, spike strips are not out of the question. All they have to do, though, is guess what lane she's going to be in. Clearly, she's staying on the 5. She's been on the 5 for uh, quite some time. So that is her freeway of choice here. But uh, the question is, is can they guess what lane she's going to be in to try to uh, effectively deploy a set of spike strips on this pursuit? And once again, if you're just joining us, uh, Eliana Marino and James Pollard here in News Chopper 4. Uh, we were actually on the way to a pursuit in Orange County uh, when we first launched at a Whiteman, but we uh, got detoured to a pursuit in Temple City. And uh, once that was over, we were back on the chase out of Orange County. So I think this may actually be the same one. Uh, this vehicle came back as a, an 1126 is the CHP code, which uh, comes back as a, an abandoned vehicle, perhaps a, a vehicle that you would see on the side of the road, side of the freeway here in the emergency lane. CHP uh, responded to it. Uh, oftentimes you'll see those cars. Those are the ones that you see that get tagged with like a yellow or green tag. And then that, that's what lets uh, tow truck drivers know that, they can, that the vehicle has already been cleared. They can come, come by and uh, tow it away. Uh, but in this case, when, C when the CHP approached, uh, this person simply took off. And uh, the pursuit has been going on now for uh, at least 30 minutes, maybe more. Uh, we're uh, entering uh, uh, the city of Glendale here. Uh, we're not far from Rogers Stadium, uh, approaching uh, Silver Lake as well. Uh, still northbound on the 5. The driver is described as a woman, and at this point the CHP believes that she's the only person in the car, although uh, if there was somebody in the back seat, it would be difficult to tell because those windows are just so darkly tinted. We can see the front, though. We can see that front passenger seat, and from my vantage point, it looks like it's maybe a bag. But this is, again, still... CHP. Thank you, Jim. This is still a CHP that is in pursuit on the brown and the gold for those of you who have a scanner and, and like to listen at home. And a CHP airplane overhead. Okay, cool. Okay, I got the gold on one and the brown on the other. <laughs> cool, but they're switching to the blue. <laughs> so all these uh, scanner colors that, I'm, that you guys are hearing me uh, talk about here, uh, that all pertains to the CHP. Depending on what area that they're at on the freeways, uh, it's a different CHP color that takes over that section. So. So right now they're switching to the blue, which is kind of one that everyone can pretty much hear. Just because this pursuit has gone across so many areas and been going on for so long as well. So I'm hearing that there is going to be a CHP officer standing by at Colorado. So we'll see if perhaps they try to set up some spike strips. It's unclear at this time, but what I can hear is that they are setting up ahead. Coming up to Los Feliz. And real quickly, I'm just going to do an update for our sister station, Telemundo, before resuming our, our coverage in English.
Buenas noches desde el helicóptero. Yo soy Eliana Moreno junto con mi piloto James Pollard y estamos sobre una persecución uh, policíaca con la patrulla de caminos de California que ahora se encuentra en la autopista en en la autopista 5, perdón, en dirección norte, acercándose a la salida Colorado en la ciudad de Glendale. Esa es una persecución que empezó aproximadamente, será hace unos 30, 40 minutos en el condado de Orange y ha continuado en la autopista 5 hasta llegar ahora aquí al condado de Los Ángeles, donde continuamos en dirección norte. La conductora uh, es la única persona que está dentro del vehículo. Esa es una persecución que empezó cuando Oficiales de la patrulla de, de caminos de California vieron a este vehículo Toyota RAV4 rojo en color, uh, presumiblemente abandonado en la autopista, pero cuando se acercaron fue cuando la mujer uh, empezó a manejar y desde entonces ha tratado de evadir a la policía. Las uh, velocidades no han sido muy altas, uh, aproximadamente de 50 a 60 millas por hora todo el tiempo, pero ahora nos encontramos uh, acercándonos a la autopista 134. Entonces, uh, vamos a ver si continúa en la autopista 5 o si se cambia a la 134, pero si se queda en este carril, va a continuar en la autopista 5 en dirección norte. Uh, como les digo, al momento creen que él, él es la única persona adentro del vehículo y se desconoce por qué está huyendo. Pero la patrulla de caminos de California sigue persiguiendo a esta mujer con uh, tres patrullas detrás del vehículo y un avión del de departamento sobre la persecución. Reportando desde el helicóptero, yo soy Elian Moreno, Telemundo 52. Back in English, guys, and I'm going to just do a quick call here to uh, NFC. I need to switch a few things over, so pardon me. I'll, you guys can continue to watch as I uh, push a couple buttons up here. NFC from the chopper. Can I switch to O? Oh, we're entering the valley. I've got it ready to go. You say when. So this person has been very lucky. There's really nothing in the way of traffic. It's really surprising. Very light traffic conditions here now coming through Burbank. Up to, oh, back arrow. Northbound 5, coming up to Burbank Boulevard. So now I've gotten it on the blue. Okay, passing Magnolia. Pasadena Air is overhead is what I'm hearing now. Okay. 
approaching the San Fernando exit here northbound on the 5. Still in Burbank. I can see Burbank Airport off to my left. The Verdugo Mountains off to my right. Hollywood Way. I am hearing that uh, they're going to set up some spice strips here very soon. So let's keep an eye out for that, guys. They're black in color. We should see them across one of these lanes. But the key is that they have to pretty much guess what lane she's going to be in. And at this point, she's sticking to that middle lane. Passing Buena Vista here on the northbound five. We're still in Burbank. Burbank's a pretty large city here in the San Fernando Valley. So we're going to be on that for a bit. Okay. Hollywood Way is the next exit coming up. And I know that there's a unit waiting up there. Okay. I know that they have set up a spike, so let's uh, keep an eye out for that. I won't say specifically where, because just in case she's listening to us, which does happen sometimes. So we're entering Sun Valley. There you go. There was the spike. I think it was a good one. Look at that, guys. Look at that front tire. Yep. Looks good to me. I don't know about the rear tires. Uh, yeah, no, that rear one's flat, too. So at least the tires on our side of the vehicle are uh, are flat now. So uh, it's going to be a matter of time here before uh, she's going to be forced to stop. Doesn't mean she's going to get out of the vehicle, but at least the vehicle's going to come to a stop here at some point. She's slowing down. You see the night sun there. That's uh, the Pasadena airstrip that just joined the mix. This whole time, we just had a plane from the uh, CHP because the CHP helicopter was tied up in that uh, protest in uh, Glendale at the school district. Once again, if you're just joining us, this started in Orange County. I believe it's the chase uh, that I heard on the uh, northbound five at Avery Parkway. And originally, the CHP just saw this vehicle. Uh, I believe they saw it abandoned on the side of the road or on the side of the freeway. They just simply pulled up to it. They wanted to check it out. And uh, that's when the driver took off. Uh, the driver's described as a woman. They don't believe anybody else is in there with her. But at this point, it's unclear why she took off and continues to evade the CHP here for quite some time. I first heard about this uh, in the um, San Juan Capistrano area. Uh, and now it's all the way in Sun Valley. So it has been going on for quite some time. And it's continuing here, though, at slow speeds, nonetheless, in Sun Valley. Northbound 5 in Sun Valley. Next freeway coming up is the 170. If you're northbound on the 5, you don't have the option of getting on the 170. Uh, there's no connector. You'd have to get off. And then you could get back on. Southbound 5, that's a different story. But if you're northbound on the 5, you uh, there's just no connector.
So really slowing down here. At Penrose. We've got two flat tires on this side, unclear on the other side, but we want to stay on the driver's side uh, for when this does come to an end because we want to see uh, the person get out. So we're going to stay on this side. But if I hear from the CHP whether there's flats on the other side, I'll let you know. And thank you to everyone who is reaching out to us on social media, who is uh, who are watching uh, this pursuit uh, along with us here. Uh, apparently, we have lots of friends here in the Burbank area. Uh, Rob Emery said uh, we flew right by him, and then uh, Ryan and uh, Lily, we flew uh, right by you guys as well. But this pursuit is now out of Burbank and is now in uh, the Sun Valley area here, northbound on the Five Freeway at Lankersham Boulevard. It's a shared exit with Tuxford, so it's Lankersham slash uh, Tuxford. Slow speeds, less than 30 miles. Uh, could they do a pit now? Yes, they could. <laughs> but uh, at this point, I haven't heard talk of them trying to do it, though they can. All CHP units are pit uh, authorized or pit approved, so basically they've all gone through the training to do a pit maneuver. Uh, but at this point, uh, I haven't heard the watch commander authorize that, so uh, until then, uh, it'll be a uh, spike strips only. If a pit uh, comes into the mix, I will let you know. But for now, I have not heard talk of it on the scanner. Continuing though, northbound five, Sun Valley, Tuxford exit. Passing under Lakersham. And real quickly, I'm just going to do an update for our sister station, Telemundo, before resuming our coverage in English. Buenas noches, una vez más desde el helicóptero. Yo soy Liliana Moreno, reportando sobre la persecución que continúa en autopista 5. Ahora estamos en el área de Sun Valley, acercándose a la salida de la calle Sheldon. La persecución continúa ahora a velocidades hasta más despacios. Y la conductora uh, detrás del uh, volante uh, presumiblemente es la única persona dentro del vehículo. Pero eso es una persecución que empezó en el condado de Orange, entró al condado de Los Ángeles y continúa aquí en el condado de Los Ángeles con la patrulla de caminos de California detrás del vehículo. Uh, estoy contando uh, cinco, uh, cinco patrullas uh, del departamento que están detrás del vehículo, uh, junto con un avión de la patrulla de caminos de California y también el helicóptero de la ciudad de Pasadena. Uh, esa es la luz que están viendo uh, sobre el vehículo, uh, esta parte del uh, helicóptero que viene uh, de la ciudad de Pasadena. Uh, la conductora um, empezó uh, esta persecución uh, cuando estaba cerca de la autopista 5 y la salida Avery Parkway, que es en el condado de Orange, cerca de San Juan Capistrano. Uh, la, los oficiales del departamento vieron el vehículo abandonado y se acercaron, pero fue cuando la mujer uh, se dio a la fuga y la persecución, la persecución empezó. Ya lleva bastante tiempo, mínimo 45 minutos, posiblemente más, y continúa aquí ahora entrando al área de Pacoima y Arlita, acercándose a la autopista 170. Ah, reportando desde Pacoima, yo soy Eliana Moreno, del Mundo 52. Solo occupant on the phone. Okay, so she is on the phone, is what we're hearing. So that CHP officer that you saw get close to her, uh, what he was doing was he was trying to uh, see if, uh, uh, if there was anybody else in there, what she was doing, and they said that she, they could see that she was on the phone, uh, but they don't see anybody else. So single occupant 
Um, it is getting a little bit darker, so pardon me, I'm going to uh, adjust uh, to my nighttime settings here. So we're still, uh, she's losing a tire tread is what they're saying. So she's still on the five. They're saying one female occupant and she's losing the tire uh, tread there on, uh, on her tires. That's as a result of a successful spike strip and I'm starting to see some sparks flying as well. So light traffic conditions here for now, but I'm hearing that there is a little bit of traffic right with the merge with the 170. So we may see a little bit of that traffic uh, start to come into play. But look at that tire. Threw on a couple doublers there so we can see that tire a little bit better, even though it makes the picture a little bit grainy, but that way we can see what's going on. Wow, look at that. There goes the tire, down to the rim now. Okay, now we're really gonna start to see sparks flying. So we're right at Osborne, near our home airport of Whiteman Airport. Continuing northbound five. So the five freeway here is basically Pacoima on the right side of the freeway, Arlita on the left. The vehicle itself has uh, Arizona plates. So at this point, uh, we it's not registered to anyone in the area, so unclear what her final destination may be. If it's Arizona, she's going the wrong way. But highly doubt she's going to get there with a, a vehicle that's missing a tire. Approaching Terabella. So once again, if you're just joining us, this pursuit started all the way in Orange County. I believe it's the chase that uh, we had heard uh, on the San Juan Capistrano frequencies of the CHP, made its way northbound on the five and uh, entered LA County been in LA County ever since. At this point, it looks like she's trying to get to Kern County, continuing northbound here on the 5 freeway. But uh, the vehicle itself is a Toyota RAV4, red in color. The woman is believed to be the only occupant in the car. She is on the phone with someone. It's unclear who, whether it's a family member or if she's on the phone with 911. At this point, uh, we, it, we just know that she's on the phone because the CHP officer pulled up right next to her peeked inside and could see that she was on the phone. She ran over a spike strip though when we were uh, at the northbound five at Hollywood Way. And that uh, pretty much hit both tires on our side of the vehicle. And uh, since then the uh, tread came off the front tire. So she's down to the rim on that. Uh, she's taking it slow though. That's why we're not really seeing uh, sparks flying. We did see that a little bit, but at these sp speeds we won't see it too much. Can they do a pit maneuver? Yes. Uh, vehicle is uh, small enough, it's going slow enough. There's really not anything in the way of traffic, but at this point we haven't heard talks of them actually attempting that. I wanted to widen out the shot just a little bit because they said there was a car up ahead that they thought was maybe trying to get in the way, but I'm not really seeing it from my vantage point. You see it? You're seeing? Right in front of you? In front of the car? In front of the car? 
Oh yeah, there it is. Okay, so yeah, that car there. That black SUV. They're lighting it up because uh, they're essentially trying to get at it. They're trying to get it out of the way. They're trying to make sure that person's not trying to get involved in any way. It could just be someone who's curious and, and just wants to watch the pursuit in the rearview mirror. But, but either way, they just want that person out of the mix. So there's going to be a unit that's going to go uh, up to that person and uh, get them to speed up. Cool. Thank you, Jim. Okay, so Jim can see some uh, units of the CHP coming up. Let's see. All right. Okay, she just lost her right front tire as well, which is on the other side of the vehicle, so we can't see it, but, but just heard that happen. I'm gonna widen out a bit so we can see the other elements here as well. So she's coming up to the interchange with the 118. So that still puts us uh, in the Pacoima area. But if she continues northbound on the five, then that puts us in areas like Silmar, Mission Hills. You see a couple squad cars there. Those are the units that Jim could see up ahead. And it was because they were trying to set up a spike. I did see that CHP officer uh, try to deploy. He did pull it. Unclear if, uh, if she hit it. Very slow speeds here. That's what happens when you don't have any tires left. They're saying it was a good spike. Okay, so now I'm hearing that the new hall units of the CHP have permission to try to do a pit maneuver. So we may see that happen here soon. Okay. Entering Mission Hills here. Okay, so yeah, I'm hearing uh, they have permission to pit it. It's just a matter of getting in there. Who's going to do it? All the elements are pretty much perfect for a pit maneuver. It's going slow enough. She's actually fishtailing a little bit. It looks like she's losing control because she's missed. She doesn't have tires. One officer just suggested that they simply wait. She's losing control, so they may not need to do a pit. Crossing over San Fernando here. We're still uh, in Mission Hills. Slow speeds, northbound five. They want they want to try to get her before she they, she transitions to the five. They said, but uh, they might have meant uh, in the Newhall Pass because she's already in the five. She's already on the five. Okay, there's a vehicle there off to the side.
So we're now in Silmar. About six units of the CHP that are behind this uh, woman. And it looks like they may be moving in for the pit. Here you go. Northbound 5 freeway through, through Silmar. Gonna come up to that rear bumper. And they're gonna try to turn into her. Here goes the attempt to pit. It happened, but let's see if it was enough. That might have done it. She's uh, at a stop. Doors are still closed. Vehicle is straddling the slow lane and the emergency lane. CHP moving in. Weapons will be facing northbound. They want to avoid a crossfire situation. At this point, uh, she's not moving, is what they're saying. No motion. But what they'll do is, uh, they can really slow things down at this point. The vehicle's at a stop. But what they'll try to do is get her to throw the keys out the window. That way they know for sure she can't go anywhere. All northbound traffic is now stopped. Again, this is on the northbound 5 freeway in Silmar. Uh, just south of the 405, north of the 118. The backup on this 5 freeway, though, is already slowing down a lot. I can see the backup uh, to the 170 freeway on this northbound 5. So if you do normally travel through the, this area on the northbound 5, you can take San Fernando Road or Laurel Canyon instead. The doors are still closed. They can try to throw in less than lethal rounds. I believe that's what they just did. It was kind of hard to see from this uh, side, but it does appear that they threw uh, less, or they shot less than lethal rounds into the vehicle. But we're going to stay on this side because this is uh, the driver's side of the car. And we want to see her come out. You can see that they have the police canine ready to go. And actually, let me take the map off for you guys. You don't need that anymore since she's not moving. Uh, but I can see the police canine. It's here uh, should its services be needed. It's right there with its handler. Still no movement is what they're saying. An hour. Uh, Jack, one hour left, and we're right next to Waven. Back with you guys here. So uh, the situation now is she's in the car. She's not getting out, uh, but uh, time is on the side of the officers. Uh, they can uh, bring out a crisis negotiator if needed. They can also uh, bring out the SWAT team if it comes to that. Uh, hopefully it doesn't, uh, but at this point, uh, you can see that there was a number of CHP officers that uh, have the uh, vehicle surrounded. Uh, while all of this is taking place, this northbound 5 is at a complete standstill. We've got a heavy backup already uh, from the 170. The uh, southbound side of the 5, uh, that's still moving nicely, but you'll probably start to get some uh, looky-loose slowdown on that side. Uh, officers have already deployed what looks like less than lethal rounds into the vehicle on the passenger side. The woman in the car is believed to be the only person in there. A pursuit that started all the way down in Orange County has uh, come to a stop here in Silmar after a successful pit maneuver. But the, what they're saying is that at this point, uh, there's no change. She's still not moving. She's still not complying. But, but uh, she does have a phone. I'm seeing a little bit of smoke there. I think those may be uh, some more uh, less than lethal rounds moving into the vehicle. And those are usually like pepper ball rounds. Uh, something that would be an irritant. Uh, think of, like, pepper spray, but uh, 10,000 times worse. And it's just super difficult to breathe. You can't stand it. You get out of the car. Simple as that. Uh, but some people are, are able to resist it. Uh, at this point, uh, unclear how long she'll uh, 
she'll keep this going, but until then, northbound side of the five freeway at a complete stop here in Silmar. Let me quickly just show you the backup because I think I have time. There you go. Back up there, all those uh, headlights. And now if you'll allow me, I'll do a quick update for our sister station, Telemundo but it's actually, I may wait just a moment. It looks like officers may be approaching with a shield and a baton. So they're gonna approach the uh, passenger side of the car. They're gonna try to break that window. So they're approaching the car, they're breaking it. They're saying she's not moving, so it could be a situation where she is not conscious. So for that reason, they, they had to move in. I can see one officer has his gun drawn. Another one has a flashlight. The third one has a shield. They're all looking very carefully in there. Uh, Jim, can we try to do the other side? Because it looks like they'll pull her out of that other side if, if they do. Okay, so we're going to move to the other side. Normally, normally we like being on uh, the driver's side, but uh, since, they approached the, since they approached the right side of the car, we're going to move over to the passenger side as well. They are asking for the fire department. So they're asking for the fire department, which means I'm not going to push in too much. Uh, we don't know what her condition is at this time. Uh, clearly, um, clearly, she, she appears to not be a threat because they're saying she, they're saying she's not moving. And now they're going to come up to the driver's side, of course. <laughs> as soon as we move over, uh, they uh, they come to the side we were on, but uh, just on beyond those trees. Those officers are approaching the driver's side now, and they did request they did request a rescue ambulance from the LA City Fire Department. And once again, I won't zoom in too much just because we don't know what her condition is. It does not appear that she is a threat to them at this time. Yeah, go for it. Thank you. We're in the city of Los Angeles, so uh, the LA City Fire Department will respond. And once again, I'm just keeping a, a wider shot. We don't know what her condition is. We don't know why she wasn't moving. We don't know why the fire department is being requested. So for that reason, uh, we just want to be sensitive about this and, and keep it a little bit wider. Yeah, so city fire is still being requested. So some officers are attending to the women. Other officers are clearing the vehicle. We'll see the the trunk open here in just a moment. They're saying she's in custody, but no update on her condition. Even if she is in need of medical attention, they, w they do still take suspects into custody.
Okay, I see a push in here. Look, looks like there she is. Okay, there she is. Uh, thank God she is up and walking. That is a good sign. Uh, she will still get the medical attention that she needs. Uh, it looks like uh, she, it's difficult for her to stand at least. So yeah, the fire department is still gonna respond to give her uh, medical uh, care. If she's fine, then they will just take her back to the station. But at this point, it looks like she is in need of uh, some sort of medical attention. The officers are trying to help her to her feet. Uh, once again, this has the five freeway, the northbound side of the five, completely shut down. Let me show you what that looks like. The backup starts in Silmar, because that's where we're at. The backup extends to that, that's the 170. Uh, pardon me, that's the 118. So the backup extends to the 118 on the northbound five. The CHP will try to clear everything out of the, the way as quickly as they can. Hey, copy that, Jack. Yeah. So what we're gonna do real quick, guys, before we go, because we we are in need of fuel. We've been up for quite a bit. We covered two pursuits in uh, in one flight. So we're just gonna get another shot of the backup. Again, this is on the northbound side of the five. So if you anyone if know anyone who travels the northbound five here through the San Fernando Valley at this time of the night, you might wanna give them a call, let them know uh, about what is going on. This might still be here for a little bit, so they're gonna be stuck in traffic. So uh, what you want to do is uh, suggest either Laurel Canyon or San Fernando Road. Uh, they're both great alternates that run parallel to the northbound side of the 5 freeway. Because uh, otherwise, you're going to get stuck in this. They're going to try to let the left lane go is what I'm hearing. So they're going to uh, set up some cones or at least some flares and uh, allow one lane through. Uh, but very heavy delays here on the northbound 5 as this pursuit out of Orange County comes to an end here in the Silmar area on the northbound five with one person in custody. Once again, thank you very much for watching us here on NBCLA.com and all of our streaming platforms. I'm Eliana Rain, no, alongside my pilot, James Pollard. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, we will uh, see you for the...